Hello guys, how you doing? Um, so, how, how many people here have tried oxygen therapy? You haven't tried oxygen therapy? You're not breathing? Uh, on a good day. So, I, I want to start, um, I want to talk about uh, what oxygen therapy is. And uh, we'll start by talking about breathing. And when we breathe, we take in about 21% oxygen, as you've seen in previous slides. And when oxygen gets into your, uh, in, into your lungs, into these little tiny alveoli, these little lung sacs, they get wrapped around, 70% of them are wrapped around blood vessels called capillaries. And it's such an efficient system that uh, uh, blood, which has red blood cells, you see this slide right here, this is an example of blood. When we spin it, we get this liquid plasma and we get these red blood cells. Here it is in circulation uh, as, as, as blood. But when a red blood cell gets into, uh, in proximity with that alveoli, it's 97 to 99% full when it leaves the lungs. So when we, uh, we have such an efficient system to oxygenate the body, and it's just by breathing. And it's extremely efficient that we can't force any more oxygen in. That's why we can breathe out, we can give CPR. Oxygen is, uh, uh, is not utilized, a very efficient system. Well, what happens when we get a hypoxia or low oxygen states in the body? We start getting more disease. We start getting uh, less function, repair, and regeneration. Those are compromised by uh, lack of oxygen. If, if we can uh, understand the role of oxygen, one of the main roles of oxygen, how do you get energy? Most people will say from food, right? But if you don't eat for five minutes, you're fine. If you don't breathe for five minutes, there's a problem. And why it's a problem is because that little oxygen molecule is so important to get into the mitochondria and combust with the energy, the carbon-based food, to create ATP, cellular energy. And that's the energy that your body needs and drives. Your whole body is just energy. It's, uh, you're ultimately composed of these atoms, which is a central core of energy, with electrons spinning around a very high energy. And that's why you keep needing to breathe, because we keep spending this ATP, this energy. And when you take a look at a little kid, five years old, they got a lot of energy, they're running around. But as we age, generally, not always, we'll start seeing a lack of oxygen. But when we check people's uh, oximetry, they, most people are 97 to 99% full. Their red blood cells are full. So what is the problem with the aging uh, process? Um, it's actually the number one killer for all of us, for North Americans, is heart disease, strokes, heart attacks. And at five years of age, as we, as we live in today's society, we start developing fatty streaks and we get atherosclerosis. And this is a normal thing. When I used to cut up in di uh, cadaver dissection, I still remember my professor, like, I'd be like, what is this? Why is it so crunchy, these arteries? Oh, that's normal. It's calcification. And then you look at this rise in heart disease, and we might think, well, I don't have heart disease. I don't have a stroke or heart attack. You know, that's the first symptom. But it's, it, it's an actual narrowing of blood vessels, and blood carries oxygen. So when I said 97 to 99% full here of oxygen, that's what keeps us alive. But as we age, there might be, instead of five lanes to the brain, one lane, and things start slowing down. And that's where we start getting into problems. Uh, uh, training, exercise, it's all about getting oxygen and blood flow and driving that energy. So, um, 17 years ago, I started in Canada a, a multi-place hyperbaric chamber where we applied oxygen under pressure. And what oxygen under pressure does is it dissolves extra oxygen that you could not get into this liquid called plasma. 
actually one of the first studies, in, not first, 1960, a study came out called Life Without Blood, and they took these pigs, took all their red blood cells out in a hyperbaric chamber, sanguinated them, and infused them with saline, and no problem with the pigs well, until they, you know, sacrificed them. But no brain damage before that, nothing. And it showed there was enough oxygen in this liquid to bypass the, the loss that was in these red blood cells. And from there, it became a treatment for, in hospitals for severe blood loss anemia uh, and for uh, conditions like um, carbon monoxide poisoning. So we have these chambers for hospital 13 life or death situations. When I started, I said, well, why wait? One of them is a chronic wound, wounds that won't heal. And all of a sudden, you go into, you go into this hyperbaric chamber, you get liquid oxygen that bathes the brain, the spinal cord, uh, cerebral spinal fluid. Your whole body gets energy. You got enough food in your body for energy. It's the oxygen for the conversion. You breathe six pounds of, en of oxygen a day, and it doesn't weigh that much. Do you know how much oxygen is on a red blood cell? Any guesses? Can carry up to a billion. 250 million hemoglobin molecules. Each hemoglobin carries four oxygen sites. So you think um, the relative size of this, you look at the atomic table and you see how small oxygen is, but how much our body needs it. And, if, and by getting extra oxygen, now we start uh, increasing our performance, uh, reducing some of these uh, uh, chronic conditions, inflammatory conditions. Inflammation is the biggest advantage of being in a hyperbaric chamber because what you're doing is you're getting into this liquid. That gets where circulation can't get into because of inflammation, but the liquid does. Uh, when you get inflamed, you get leaky blood vessels and uh, fluid and white blood cells go in. Oxygen goes in, in as well. Down regulates your pro-inflammatory cytokines, up regulates the anti-inflammatory, and your tissue starts healing. Uh, when we put it in uh, uh, post-injuries and athletes and all that, it's a type 1 to 4 collagen ratio that becomes more tensile. And what happens? Stronger, uh, uh, stronger repair. And to me, it's all a function of energy. And uh, uh, an example I, I have is in my clinic, got a 90-year-old patient, runs, he's got more energy than a lot of my 20-year-olds. He gives everyone a granola bar, but he is... You know, we, we don't have to fall uh, through in this uh, system where th the problem isn't in breathing in our lungs. Uh, the problem is once the lungs deliver red blood cells, like a magnet, these oxygen molecules go into these red blood cells. Now these red blood cells are for destined tissue, brain, joints, muscle, t all, every cell in your body uh, needs, uh, uh, needs oxygen to combust for the cellular energy. And that's what makes, uh, 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 th th that's what helps in quicker repair, growth, regeneration, and function uh, alone. So I'm sure if you guys have seen the portable hyperbaric chambers, uh, they're out there, it's been uh, really, really busy, but if you haven't gone in, uh, try to get a session because what you're doing is when you're in there, you're just loading your body with this extra oxygen, and that gives the body the ability to start uh, that repair process. So we put it into, uh, it's FDA cleared for home use and for clinics. So we'll have them in clinics, but uh, there's, there's a reason why 400, more than 400 NFL football players have uh, the portable chambers in their homes uh, and even travel uh, with it. So that is a physiological uh, benefit of uh, getting extra oxygen. I'll just very quickly, what, is, what does that do when we see uh, that extra oxygen? It's like giving the whole body a whole windfall of ATP, of money, of energy. That's the body's currency. And when you get that, body spends it. The body's the smartest, you know, a, a doctor, whatever. You cut your skin and it heals. Which uh, a factor happened first? What's the first cytokine that, you know, we we understand that the body has an innate ability. But we know in hospitals when we give extra oxygen in the chamber, we can quicken that process. Um, so it's about optimal energy. And what does the body then do? Uh, you could say, well, what if it's too much? The, 
the body uses that extra oxygen for energy and starts building tissue, stem cell, uh, but also blood vessels, collateral blood vessels. Um, and the, the example that I gave in the, in the beginning about these uh, uh, narrowing of blood vessels, uh, they're what uh, helps the body, they're what slows the body down. So by now creating new tracks, uh, your body starts uh, developing new highways uh, that it can go into brain, tissue, joints, and I think, is that the cue? Okay, thank you. <laughs>